Alright, welcome. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. And today we are in our Awani studio. And uh, one of the topics that we're going to be talking about today is uh, in Malaysia, it's estimated by uh, the year 2040, 20% of our population will be over the age 60. Now, this population, uh, by having an aging population, uh, what are the questions that we need to ask? So today with me, we have Dato Dr. Selvam Rengasamy. Thank you, Dato, for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Who is the president of Saham. And yes. we're actually here to talk about healthy aging uh, and also how uh, important it is uh, for people to actually take care of themselves when they're getting older. All right, Dato? Yes. So talking about Saham, let's start off with Saham. <coughs> what is Saham? Um, Saham, actually we started in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, it's a society for healthy ageing mm -hmm. uh, and advancement of hormones. So we started this society basically to educate doctors and the public alike to create an awareness about health. Uh, because unfortunately what we study in medical school as doctors is to address uh, collective symptoms as a disease and how to fix the disease with uh, drugs. Uh, but body doesn't want drugs, it only wants natural means of healing. Okay. So we, we, this education was necessary mm -hmm. because of increasing in the number of chronic degenerative diseases, mm -hmm. infectious diseases and cancers. Uh, and uh, the world over, everybody is trying to be healthy and every government is struggling to meet the healthcare budget, which is never going to be enough unless we shift the focus to addressing what causes the disease. Okay. So this awareness was necessary. So we formed a society. This is a non-profit organization um, and we run conferences and we also do certification exams for, certification exams for, for, what, what for doctors to certify that they have attended a nutritional course, a nutritional mm -hmm. medicine and um, also hormone therapy. Okay. Uh, and we conduct exams and we certify once they pass. So at least um, you can find these doctors who are certified in our website mm -hmm. and if uh, people want to access to qualified doctors mm -hmm. who can give them advice on nutritional medicine mm -hmm. as well as natural hormone therapies, uh, you'll be able to find the doctors who have been trained and certified. Okay, so talking about nutritional medicine, what, what do you mean by nutritional medicine? Uh, this is known by many names, some call it nutritional medicine, some would like to call it as integrative medicine or holistic medicine. Okay. Uh, basically, it addresses the core issues of how the body functions. All right. okay, so, if you have a disease, it's a deviation from the norm. Okay. So, this deviation from the norm means uh, you are deficient or sometimes even excess of one of these nutrients or it could be your hormones, or it could be excess of toxins. So when we say it's nutritional medicine teaching, we address every aspect of physiology and biochemistry. So it becomes natural. Because the focus is only in giving the body natural nutrients, natural hormones, and detoxification all through natural means. It is not through drugs. Okay, so it's a different uh, perspective from normal medicine. Like if I have a flu, I'll go and I'll take a Panadol and, uh, and then that'll be it. I'll take a Paracetamol and, and that'll be it. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to actually access why am I getting Exactly, sick? Dinesh. Okay. Addressing the root cause uh, defines the purpose of medical practitioners. Okay, all right. So moving on, what I said earlier was we have an aging population, Dato. Yes. So talking about health, healthy aging, so what does that consist of? Um, okay, um, in the introduction you mentioned that you know by uh, 2040, 40, yeah, 20 percent of the population, 20 percent of the population is going to be above 60. 60. Years old. Yeah. Um, so we are we want to talk about healthy aging uh, at the at 60 years of age. Mm. Actually, even uh, before that, you know, 50. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. What we are seeing is premature aging. Uh -huh. This is very important. What we see is premature aging and early onset of all forms of chronic degenerative diseases. For example, we knew children were getting type 1 diabetes mm. and adults were getting type 2 diabetes before. But now children who are mostly obese have the adult type of diabetes in childhood, wow. in yeah. young age mm. or as teenagers. 
So there is a shift in the onset of diseases, including cancers, mm -hmm. to a much younger age. And there is a lot of premature aging. That means, what I'm saying is, aging actually starts after the age of 25 or 30. So if so you I'm want to control... <laughs> then I'm much older than yeah. that. <laughs> so if you want to control aging, the earlier you start with the stronger foundation, the better you will be as the aged person. Mm. Uh, but of course, things are different as you age because your metabolism is slower, your ability to detoxify is slower, your immune system is weaker. So the sooner you address is better. So when we talk about aging population, there are some very important aspects. Uh, diet is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, sleep is important. Mm -hmm. um, exercise is important. Connectivity, social connectivity, uh, you know, with family and friends. This is a very important aspect that aging people don't seem to enjoy because there is so much of loneliness and depression. Mm -hmm. So you have to address all this and every one of these, including addressing your declining immune system, including accumulation of toxins, including acidity in the body, each one of these become a pillar of health. So it has to be addressed collectively. So you cannot just talk about diet alone, you just can't talk about uh, exercise alone. But the core difference between an aging person and a young youthful person, say you take about the age of 25, and you take a person aged 50, mm -hmm. one of the main difference is the hormone level. Oh. At 25, you will have optimum hormones. Mm -hmm. At 50, each passing decade, you generally lose about 10% of your hormones. Mm -hmm. And hormones are, is like the fuel for your engine. They are chemical messengers, and they do a lot of important functions in the body. Okay. All right, thank you, Dato. We will be right back after this. Uh, after this, we're actually talking about uh, men and women over 50 years old, what do they need to do and some of uh, how does your body change as you age So some of this we'll be talking right after this break. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Welcome, this is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. And today we are in our Awani studio. And uh, what are the topics that we're going to be talking about today is uh, in Malaysia, it's estimated by uh, the year 2040, 20% of our population will be over the age 60. Now, this population, uh, by having an aging population, uh, what are the questions that we need to ask? So today with me, we have Dato Dr. Selvam Rengasamy. Thank you, Dato, for joining us today. Thank you, Who is the president of Saham. And yes. we're actually here to talk about healthy aging uh, and also how uh, important it is uh, for people to actually take care of themselves when they're getting older. All right, Dato? Yes. So talking about Saham, let's start off with Saham. <coughs> what is Saham? Um, Saham, actually we started in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, it's a society for healthy aging mm -hmm. uh, and advancement of hormones. So we started this society basically to educate doctors and the public alike to create an awareness about health. Uh, because unfortunately what we study in medical school as doctors is to address uh, collective symptoms as a disease and how to fix the disease with uh, drugs. Uh, but body doesn't want drugs, it only wants natural means of healing. Okay. So we, we, this education was necessary mm -hmm. because of increasing in the number of chronic degenerative diseases, mm -hmm. infectious diseases and cancers. Uh, and uh, the world over, everybody is trying to be healthy and every government is struggling to meet the healthcare budget, which is never going to be enough unless we shift the focus to addressing what causes the disease. Okay. So this awareness was necessary. So we formed a society. This is a non-profit organization um, and we run conferences and we also do certification exams for, certification exams for, for, what, what for doctors to certify that they have attended a nutritional course and nutritional mm -hmm. medicine and um, also hormone therapy. Okay. Uh, and we conduct exams and we certify once they pass. So at least 
Um, you can find these doctors who are certified in our website mm -hmm. and if uh, people want to access to qualified doctors mm -hmm. who can give them advice on nutritional medicine mm -hmm. as well as natural hormone therapies. Uh, you'll be able to find the doctors who have been trained and certified. Okay, so talking about nutritional medicine, what, what do you mean by nutritional medicine? Uh, this is known by many names, some call it nutritional medicine, some would like to call it as integrative medicine or holistic medicine. Okay. Uh, basically, it addresses the core issues of how the body functions. All right. Okay, so if you have a disease, it's a deviation from the norm. Okay. So this deviation from the norm means uh, you are deficient or sometimes even excess of one of these nutrients or it could be your hormones or it could be excess of toxins. So when we say it's nutritional medicine teaching, we address every aspect of physiology and biochemistry. So it becomes natural because the focus is only in giving the body natural nutrients, natural hormones and detoxification all through natural means. It is not through drugs. Okay. So it's a different uh, perspective from normal medicine. Like if I have a flu, I'll go and I'll take a Panadol and, uh, and that'll be it. I'll take a Paracetamol and, and that'll be it. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to actually access why am I getting Exactly, medicine? Dinesh. Okay. Addressing the root cause uh, defines the purpose of medical practitioners. Alright, so moving on, what I said earlier was we have an aging population, Dato. Yes. So, talking about health, healthy aging, so what does that consist of? Um, okay, um, in the introduction you mentioned that you know by uh, 2040, 40, yeah, 20 percent of the population, 20 percent of the population is going to be above 60. 60. Years old. Yeah. Um, so we are we want to talk about healthy aging uh, at the at 60 years of age. Mm. Actually, even uh, before that, you know, 50, exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. What we are seeing is premature aging. Uh -huh. This is very important. Okay. What we see is premature aging and early onset of all forms of chronic degenerative diseases. For example, we knew children were getting type 1 diabetes mm. and adults were getting type 2 diabetes before. But now children who are mostly obese have the adult type of diabetes in childhood in yeah. young age mm. or as teenagers. So there is a shift in the onset of diseases, including cancers, mm. to a much younger age. And there is a lot of premature aging. That means, what I'm saying is, aging actually starts after the age of 25 or 30. Okay. So if so you I'm want to control... Older, right? <laughs> and I'm much older than yeah. that. <laughs> so if you want to control aging, the earlier you start with the stronger foundation, the better you will be as the aged person. Mm. Uh, but of course, things are different as you age because your metabolism is slower, your ability to detoxify is slower, your immune system is weaker. So the sooner you address is better. So when we talk about aging population, there are some very important aspects. Uh, diet is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, sleep is important. Mm -hmm. um, exercise is important. Connectivity, social connectivity you know, with family and friends. This is a very important aspect that aging people don't seem to enjoy because there is so much of loneliness and depression. Mm -hmm. So you have to address all this and every one of these, including addressing your declining immune system, including accumulation of toxins, including acidity in the body, each one of these become a pillar of health. Wow. So it has to be addressed collectively. So you cannot just talk about diet alone, you just can't talk about uh, exercise alone. But the core difference between an aging person and a young youthful person, say you take about the age of 25 and you take a person aged 50, mm -hmm. one of the main difference is the hormone level. Oh. At 25, you will have optimum hormones. Mm -hmm. At 50, each passing decade, you generally lose about 10% of your hormones. Mm. And hormones are, is like the fuel for your engine. They are chemical messengers and they do a lot of important functions in the body. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dato. We will be right back after this. Uh, after this, we're actually talking about 
uh, men and women over 50 years old, what do they need to do? And some of uh, how does your body change as you age? So some of this, we'll be talking right after this break. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Alright, welcome back. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. And today's topic, we've been talking to Dato Dr. Selvam Rangasamy, the President of Saham. Thank you, Dato, so much. We have had a very interesting conversation. Let's move on to something we discussed earlier, actually, about treating the disease. Now, you have a very interesting opinion on this. So, uh, Dato, maybe you can share how has that changed? Uh, actually, uh, treating the disease hasn't changed, okay. Dinesh. We have changed. Okay. Because basically, our our teaching does not address uh, the needs of a body. What the body needs is always something that is natural to the body. It is not asking for drugs. For any disease, it's not asking for drugs. Drugs are okay if you have acute emergency situations, but they do not heal. So, of course, I'll become unpopular by saying this. So, let's say, ask ourselves as doctors, what is my primary role mm. as a doctor? Okay. I should be a healer. Mm. And to heal, I must be able to cure or reverse the disease. Can drugs do this? You cannot. Mm. There is no drug can cure a disease. And furthermore, the word disease itself is misunderstood. Disease does not tell you what is the root cause. It does not tell you the pathology. This is a collection of symptoms and we put a label to it. Mm -hmm. Say if you have high blood sugar, I call it diabetes. Mm. If you have high blood pressure, I call it hypertension. But the root cause is different. So in order to be a healer, that's my role, right? Okay. So first is, the first principle of being a healer is, I only give the body what the body wants. And the body will only want natural ones. Even for hormones, you can't use synthetic hormones. Okay. We have been trained to use synthetic hormones. We are now training doctors to switch to natural hormones. They are very necessary, but you must use natural. So use only natural means. Number two, you cannot heal a person of their illness, any kind of illness, unless you address the root cause. Mm. And one root cause can also present in many other organs. For example, Say, we, we spoke about bone health. Okay. One of the most important hormone for bone health is testosterone, which is a male hormone, even females have, mm -hmm. but they have 10% of what we have. Okay. So if supposing someone has osteoporosis and they suffer a fracture, mm -hmm. okay, they attend to uh, orthopedics. This is necessary to fix the fracture. But if you do not pick up the root cause, the same testosterone deficiency in aging people will increase the risk of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and for women, even prolapse of the uterus and bladder, varicose veins. So one cause, multiple diseases. So how many types of treatment do you want to take? Whereas fixing the root cause will fix many of these things. So our primary role and our only role should be to understand the root cause and fix the root cause and do it naturally. And so the question comes, is it evidence-based? Well, there is so much of evidence. Mm. For example, which we'll, we'll be talking about vitamin C, mm. there are more than 100,000 articles published in, in scientific literature. Mm. The, we have to ask ourselves, are we ready to look at it and accept? And why are we so reluctant to use something that is natural? So the same question I've been asking Ministry of Health. Mm. Why are we reluctant to try vitamin C for acute infections like dengue? Mm. It is totally reversible. So if, we, if it is natural, we shouldn't be hesitant. There is enough scientific literature. Mm -hmm. So evidence-based, in my opinion, should be an evidence to heal. Mm -hmm. So drugs are known to be evidence-based, but there are always side effects. So this evidence is not useful for me. But aren't we, aren't we, grow, aren't we being grown into the environment? I grew into an environment. If there's you know, something wrong with you, you have to take something that is a drug or prescription or something to get better. But how you, do you feel that we need to change that, 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 that the mentality or that attitude that people have? Even going to a doctor, I would want him to give me something to make it better, make it go away, make whatever symptoms that I have to go away. So 
what do you think that we should do just to change that, that mentality a bit? Now, first, we have to educate ourselves. This is what actually we form Saham about because mm. we want to train doctors into understanding that a natural cure is possible. Almost all diseases. For example, diabetes is the easiest disease that we can reverse. So is hypertension, asthma. So if we equip ourselves with knowledge and we explain it to the patients, most patients will accept. There are times you have to use small amount of drugs to fix some acute symptoms, that's fine. Mm. Like in my clinic, I have not been using drugs for more than 20 years. I see a variety of cases. I treat children, I treat uh, women, I treat uh, men. Mm -hmm. And I don't, use, don't have to use drugs to heal. Mm. Even some of uh, very severe conditions like autoimmune diseases, you don't need. So the onus is on us to educate ourselves and do justice to the patient. Now then you leave it to the patient to decide. If you are a good, uh, if, you, if you create that awareness among patients, I'm sure most of them wouldn't want to touch drugs. True. Yeah, it's well, the it's awareness. Like so in Saham, some of the lectures are open to public mm -hmm. because we want to create the awareness among the public. So we train the doctors and we create awareness among the public. So because doctors alone, uh, exposing them to this kind of treatment, uh, some of the doctors will still be reluctant and they wouldn't want to accept. Mm -hmm. Whereas if the patients create that awareness, they become aware of natural way of treating, mm -hmm. then there will be a change. All right, Dato. Uh, talking about creating awareness, uh, I believe Saham has some uh, event schedule uh, coming up. Uh, what is the event about? Maybe tell us that. Um, okay, when it comes to health, the, uh, everything about health is important. Everything that is natural that the body wants is important. Vitamins are important, minerals are important, hormones are important. But there are two most important molecules. Uh, so I, I call it this way. The two most important molecules that you produce and you don't produce decides how long you live. Okay. okay? One of the home, uh, master molecule that you produce is called glutathione. Uh, of course, this is a medical term, but a lot of people know about this. This is the master molecule that every cell in our body must produce. If not, the cell will die and disease or death, uh, disease or death will occur. So, but this uh, synthesis of glutathione is always there in all of us, but it is not enough because the diet we eat, the stress, the toxins and the pollutions depleting us. And this is the master for your immune system, master for detoxification and master antioxidant. So if you want to control about 100 types of medical disorders, you need this to optimize. So this is glutathione. So this is you produce, but we need to optimize because almost all of us are deficient, including children. Okay. One of the good reasons for cancer is deficiency in glutathione. The second most important molecule that we do not produce is vitamin C. Okay. So let me ask you a question. How often do you see animals getting cancer or dengue or chickenpox or Zika or H1N1 and on and on and on, yeah, on tuberculosis? Yeah. Yeah. We don't get. Mm. Because animals produce their own vitamin C. Mm. Humans are not able to produce vitamin C. Mm. Now the point is if this was taught to us in medical school or we get ourselves aware of this knowledge, can we do justice to people who are suffering cancer and infectious diseases? Yeah. So vitamin C, humans and uh, some other mammals do not produce. Okay. So if you want to live a healthy long life, you have to optimize with vitamin C. Okay. So these two topics are specially uh, designed to be included in the June conference. Mm -hmm. We have two conferences in June and September. Uh, you can check it on our website. Mm -hmm. So it's on the 22nd of June okay. and we have invited a special speaker, one of the best in these topics from US mm -hmm. and this is open to the public as well. Okay. And if they are free, they can attend the second day, 23rd, mm -hmm. to learn about the dangers of taking calcium and the benefits of taking magnesium. Okay. So these two days are open to the public. Okay. All right. Ato. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for watching. This has been Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. If you have any questions or uh, if you have any comments, please send them to us on all our social media platforms. Please watch all our videos. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.